Hi guys and welcome to the first steps into analog cameras. Both me and Bellamy have Hello. businesses that tend to do with analog cameras. Yep. And there are a lot of new people coming into the scene and they want to start shoot, shooting film. Um, the cameras that you should use in the beginning is a bit of a question. What, what, what do we recommend? Mm -hmm. uh, so we created these five steps so that you can learn bit by bit. Yeah, to make it a little bit easier for you to make a decision. Um, so that you don't send us lots of emails saying, hey, which camera should I buy? You know, we can kind of give you an idea on, you know, some options you might have on varying levels of income and, and budget. So we'll hopefully make it a little bit easier for you. And the steps are very uh, low budget steps so that you can start from absolutely zero. Absolutely zero. Almost wow. absolutely zero. Wow. Here's the step one. Um, if you have a digital camera, you, the most probable camera you have is a Canon or a Nikon. And uh, there are models, uh, film models, that you can use, uh, especially on Nikon if you have the D-series lenses, but with Canon with any full-frame lens. And the bodies uh, tend to cost less than 50 euros. Yep. So Super it, cheap. It's for the money, it's a great bang for the buck. And at the end of the day, if it breaks, it's not really going to cost you all that much. <laughs> you just get another one. Uh, yeah, the step one is just to get you doing the first two, three, four rolls to see that if you like film or not. Mm -hmm. uh, other option is to go and find a thrift shop and uh, usually you should be able to score something like this, a Yashica Zoomate or... Uh, yeah, Olympus Super Zoom. Something like that yeah. for five euros or... Super cheap. Like... Almost nothing. And check um, thrift stores, because thrift stores, you know, um, second-hand shops, charity shops, anything like that, you know, people will just dump all of their stuff in there. You might pick something up for a fiver or less. Yeah. Know? And the last kit, if, if you don't have anything, is a Minolta AF kit. Yep. You can find it, them in Dinax mode or with the numbers 7000 or 5000 or 3000 or what so not. They come usually with a 35 to 70 millimeter zoom and uh, the whole thing costs you less than 50 euros. Still great cameras, um, easy to use, feels solid, gives you a really, really good user experience. And it's easy as heck. Now, for step two. We would recommend a compact camera that you would go with everywhere. And the point of step two is to figure out what kind of film you like. Yep. And uh, how do they act in different kind of lighting conditions in the evening and what so not. <coughs> and this kind of step usually costs around 50 to 100 euros. Um, we didn't feature the very pricey compacts that are getting a bit hyped up, <laughs> like Olympus Mu2. But we have, for example, the ori original Yashica T. Uh, yeah, and Pentax, uh, Pentax PC35 AF. Yeah. Um, Olympus. Yeah. Olympus AF1. Yeah, and the, uh, the ever famous XA3 which is a sorely, sorely underrated camera. Uh, just because it's got zone focusing doesn't mean it's in, not any good. Yep. It is good. XA1 and 2 and 4 are a lot yeah. higher priced yep. than the 3. So the 3 is the one yeah. we're looking for. And these are just some examples. There's lots and lots and lots of cameras in this category. I mean, thousands, some just unnamed. It's yep. Samurais, uh, Fuji Tiaras, yeah. Pentax Espio, and there's loads of different versions of those so just yeah. have a look just set the budget pricing on ebay or whatever and see what you can find you know? yeah and yeah they are made to uh, be easy to use mm -hmm. they were used by you know the average family consistent results yeah so w what you can do is just play with the films see what iso you like what colors you like that's the point of the step two yeah 
For step three, we will go and find items. Step three is all about getting you to have manual control about the camera so you can start pushing your creativity, doing double exposures, doing overexposing or underexposing, whatever tricks you want to try. Uh, and in that range, we're looking at 150 to 250 euros. Uh, you can overdo it, uh, especially on the, on, the, on the cameras that you can change lenses, you can blur uh, a lot. But we both picked three cameras to show you off. Tell yeah. me what you did you pick. Okay, well, I, so let me first give a disclaimer because I've done something like this before and I got called out massively for it. Here's the disclaimer. We chose items that were available to us. This is by no means a definitive list of everything that is available. Yeah. Right? <laughs> These are just the ones we could find, okay? So uh, my first choice would be something like a Yashica Electro. Um, this is the uh, this is the 35 Electro 35. Really simple. Uh, it's got a meter in it. Um, it's a really standard, straightforward rangefinder, 45 millimeter, 1.7 lens. Um, it's really easy to use. Some people might have seen it in one of the Spider-Man movies. Um, it's a great starter fixed lens rangefinder. There's a ton of cameras just like this one. Uh, all of the companies made them, Minolta, Ricoh, Canon, you know, they all made these little fixed lens range finders and they're all in the similar price, price yep. range now. Um, and the beautiful thing is, you know, oh wow, well, it was broken. Oh, oh, just buy another one then. You know, there's tons and tons of them. Second choice is something a little bit, I guess, same price range, can be, but it would be a bit of an upgrade because um, you can make this much more expensive if you wish to. Uh, this is a Canon 7, um, and this was Canon's uh, attempt at cracking the rangefinder market at the same level as uh, Leica and the Nikon S series. Um, it, it's got an interchangeable, you know, screw mount, so you can put, you could if you want to put, you know, much more expensive glass on here. But I chose a Russian lens just because Russian lenses are cheap as chips. You can get them for nothing. Um, so it's got a meter in it, but it is still fully manual. So you're going to have to learn how to compose and put put it together, and you know, set yourself up. Um, and but it's a, a a system that can be built on, you know. Yeah. So you could use this as a base and build up further later on. Um, really, really, yeah. Look out for them. They they all of them have got a wrinkled shutter as well. That's one tip. If you go, oh, it's got a wrinkled shutter, I won't buy it. Makes no difference. They've all got one, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, my final choice um, would be a Yashica, a Yashica mat. Uh, so it's TLR, so you know, you're know you onto medium format. Again, it's fully manual. You don't have a meter on this one, so you're going to have to have an external meter with you, which is an additional expense, but really not that much. Yeah, and you, you can do it with your mobile phone. You can do phone. it with your mobile phone, although like, it is fairly inaccurate. Yeah. But, you know, you know, if you're just doing roughs... Um, but lots of fun, you can double expose with these things, which is kind of cool, so you yeah. can get nice and creative. Um, and you can, again, uh, like the Yashica mat, not the later 124 uh, one, and things, but the earlier versions you can get for very, very good prices. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and really easy to use, So and a good introduction to medium format film yeah. photography. The know? easiest introduction, both Probably. in budget and uh, kind of what you're doing because yes. you have only one lens and you can see actually your yep. competition. Yep. You can be the new Vivian Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I wanted to say hi to the negative feedback community by <laughs> having the Canon AE-1 program. Um, there is also the Canon AE, uh, Canon A1 yep. and then the Canon FTB that fit uh, kind of the the bill. Uh, the good thing about Canon is that their like basic lenses are still very cheap. Mm -hmm. The fifty one point eight is around forty euros maximum, even from us as a shop. Um, then uh, I wanted to do also a kind of budget uh, option. Nikkor mats get a lot less attention than FMs or FEs or Nikon F threes or any of those. Um, Again, yes, you have to 
play with um, uh, external light meter mm -hmm. uh, in some cases of the Nikromant family, but it is very cheap and they don't break down. No, they like last ever. forever. They <laughs> will, you know, you, you will not have surprises even if you go to a very hard um, climate or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then there are funny little things like the half frame Olympus Trip 35 uh, that you can have and pocket and you know use on a daily basis. 72 shots. Yeah, 72 shots. That will keep you <laughs> keep you going, keep for, going a for a while. <laughs> yeah. That's the hardest part when you start shooting film. That actually, when every shot counts, that 36 <laughs> shot lasts roll yeah. lasts for two weeks. And <laughs> there's not many people who just bam bam bam. bam yeah, bam, yeah. Bam. <laughs> but uh, this is the stage three. Yeah. Um, and step four is already a bit higher, and we'll. Just go and find them for you. Step four is all about boosting the quality from step three. Uh, you already know kind of what you're looking for uh, or on the other hand you might have been doing only 35 millimeter and are looking to upgrade into medium format and this is the next step from there. Um, I can go first yep. this time. Your turn. Um, I'll go first with the Mamiya RZ67. It gets quite a lot of crap on the internet because it is big yes it is big uh, but it does take very good pictures it is very reliable uh, it is cheap and you have a lot of lenses that you can mount on it for cheap it's a solid uh, uh, studio camera really isn't it yeah it, it's meant for studio use but it's not it's it is heavy but it's not I mean it's big but it's not that heavy it's a yeah. uh, it's pretty much the same than carrying a Pentax 6.7, yeah. uh, it's just differently shaped. Yeah. And you can get it for a lot less, mm -hmm. especially the glasses. One thing to note with these is that the RB lenses for the RB 6.7 and the RZ lenses are different. So if you have an RB, your RZ lenses, they're not all going to fit. You need a, either an adapter or new lenses. Yeah. And yeah. the RB is even cheaper um, if, you, if you can find one. Um, then another underrated kit is uh, the Contex G1. Mm -hmm. um, the price of the lenses make it go just a bit maybe above this step or the others in this step, but it is a very solid camera. It's, you know, underrated compared to the G2 and uh, it yeah, has everything you need. It, it does. It's a very capable camera. Uh, note again, uh, the the green label lenses. If you buy a G1 and it doesn't have the green label label lenses, and you decide to buy a G2, they will not work on the G2. You have to make sure you have the ones with the green label on to make them work. And also, you buy this with the knowledge that there's no servicing for them. So if it breaks, it breaks. You yeah. have to live with that. Um, it's a risk you take. Whereas you can't say that for some of the others here because they yeah. will last forever. But the G1 is. A very strong camera so yeah and it's uh, very nice to go ar around and shoot a lot of yes, film it's, it is it, you, if you want a lot of frames this is a good option if sure. you lot, want sure. less frames this is a good option sure and then one uh, still that <laughs> you know goes in is is well yes I, I always promote the f2 fe2 instead of the fm2 yes but the other option is to upgrade the glass I have upgraded a bit too much for this price range but if you upgrade the cl uh, glass in your stage 3 camera it will give you a lot better pictures and that's an option to take step 4 in yep so uh, my choices have been uh, you know you can upgrade so uh, previously we saw on the lower level we saw the Yashica TLR uh, and 
the obvious upgrade to that one is the 124, um, which means you have a meter, which makes a whole lot of difference. These are uh, relatively cheap still, um, very easy to use, very easy to find. They made tons and tons and tons and tons of these things. Prices are going up, so the best thing to do is get one while you can. You know, because they're not going to stay cheap forever. Unfortunately, it's one of these cameras that's definitely a cult camera. Um, we forgot one uh, while while we were at it. Basically, every six four five system available to mankind yes. fits into this step four because they are cheaper than the bigger ones. Yes, and uh, it's Pentax or Mamiya or Bronica. <laughs> They all fit, they are yeah. all pretty nice. Yes, so, you know, as, as you have just said, you've got the, the uh, Pentax and also the Bronica. Bronicas are overlooked, the glass is very good. Um, they tend to be harder to repair yeah. um, when they break, um, but they, they, they still work very well. They're, they're cheap, they're easy to use, they're a lot of fun. Um, tons and tons and tons of bits and pieces that you can add to them, very modular system. I mean, the internet hasn't picked them up. Basically. Yeah, they yeah. haven't really got hold of them yet. So these are still kind of an unsung hero. Yeah. You know? uh, and obviously, uh, in this price range, this is something, one of my favorites and one I champion is the Nikon F3. You can get them for good prices um, and they are upgradable. They last forever. They're strong. Uh, yes, they're not the perfect Nikon. I hear people go, oh, it's not it's got fast enough speeds. And, uh, da, da, da. Fine, whatever. I like it. I think it's a very, very capable camera. You can spend a little on them, or you can spend a lot on them. And you've got these Nikon lenses, the F-mount lenses, so you can get <laughs> just about anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. about. Um, uh, so again, modular system, and it's a very good one to grow with. Yeah. yeah. And if you have AF lenses, maybe the Nikon F4 is a good option yeah. also, yeah. because it's in the same price range, and you can hammer down a freaking wooden yeah, building you can knock with down it. a fence post with yeah. that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then to the last step five. Yeah. We'll go and find them. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully if you've gone through the other steps. <laughs> Before we go into step five, I wanted to do a small recap. Mm -hmm. In step one you have identified yourself that I I like film. I like the idea of shooting film. Mm -hmm. In step two you have gone a bit further and explored different film and you found the ones that you like. In step three, you have got manual, uh, like... Understanding. Understanding of yep. the whole thing. Yep. And uh, then you've gone a bit higher to have different focal lengths mm -hmm. and you are starting to know what you actually like. So now step five is the step where you can put your hard earned money and safely like put it into some cameras uh, film cameras are not depreciating in value so it's not that big of a risk but a lot of people tend, tend to just jump to step five without the earlier steps yeah and then they're not getting the full use of these cameras yes and they might not even like the ones they buy mm -hmm. straight away yeah so what did you choose so, uh, my choices are, uh, well, they're fairly obvious choices, really. Um, the ones that I'm fairly well known for. Hasselblads. I like the Hasselblad system um, because it is very wide ranging. Yes, it does cost a bit of money. You can get into it for not a lot of money, but you can also get into a lot of money while getting into it. Um, the good thing is the lenses. The yeah. lenses are absolutely outstanding. There's a huge range of them. Um, there's lots of different bodies. You've got lots of different options. This is a 503 a bit later This is the ultra. This is the super wide. So uh, the 903 these can get pretty expensive You can yeah. spend an awful lot of money on these things uh, uh, But again modular system you've got your backs you've got your finders you've got your lenses You can change things around you can make sure it's really what is suitable for you um, if you're a street photographer or a portrait photographer um, even a landscape photographer, these are great cameras, uh, six by six, so you've got to be aware of that. Um, medium format, um, you get those lovely square, iconic style of images. Um, 
And if if you're actually the 903 is a bit expensive, but yep. if you already know that I'm a street photographer, I like the wide angle. Yeah. I I like it to shoot from me. the hip. Yeah. Then that's it, that's it, fine. It's the only <laughs> real good <laughs> yeah. option yeah. also. So. Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, next one. So um, still sticking with medium format, uh, but this time a rangefinder. Uh, this is the Plowbell Machina 670. Um, also the 67, 67W. Uh, there's a few different versions, well, three different versions <laughs> of it. Um, excellent cameras. It's a rangefinder. It's very, very, very easy to use. This lens is unreal. There are very, there's not many high-end medium format rangefinder options. You've got the Mamiya, you've got these, um, and then you have Bronica 645. ETR. Bronica 645, but that's a 645. Yeah. Um, well, RF 645. Yeah. Uh, you've got a, a few, but these are the big ones, you know, the yeah. six sevens. Huge negatives, uh, outstanding quality, but also very compact, as you can see, you know, very easy to move around with camera. They, people say they're fragile. I tend to find that they're not. No. These are actually pretty tough cameras, and they'll take a bit of a, a licking. Uh, you can use them just about anywhere. Yeah. Just be aware that repairing them can get expensive. Yeah. Um, keeping them working can get expensive. And lastly, um, Leica. Yeah. Elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'm known for. It, this is my personal camera. This is my MP6. But you can you can spend an awful again. You can spend an awful lot of money. It's, it's worth waiting before you jump into the deep end with this. I didn't get this as my first camera. Yeah. This came a long way down the line. I know it's the right camera for me now, but it took me quite a while to find that right camera for me. If you know that a Leica is the right camera for you, go for it. You won't regret it. And at the end of the day, if you do change your mind, you can sell it for at least what you paid for it. Yeah, and you can uh, start also at the shallow end with yes. a Leica. You can yeah. go with you don't M4P. Have to, you don't have to go for a limited edition. You don't yeah. have to go for black paint and fancy special lenses, you can just get a 50mm and an M6 and you'll yeah. be good to go. Yeah, rangefinder isn't everyone's piece of cake. Yep. If you've gone through the steps, you probably know that you like it or you don't. Yep. Um, a different kind of rangefinder, has a blast. <laughs> X-Pan, uh, again, it's for a special use, a special type of person, maybe. I think that's a camera for everyone. Everybody should experience the panoramic loveliness of that's that true. camera at least once. Everybody should use that camera at least yeah. once. And it's, uh, I mean, again, it's it's starting to be kind of or really expensive now. <laughs> really expensive. <laughs> um, There's but, the Fuji version, which is the TX. It's the yeah. same camera, but again, really expensive now. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, you know, so attainable, but it is something very special and if you're gone through the steps you know you want it then then there are the well there are special editions but then there is also uh, the Nikon F5 and then the Canon EOS 1 and uh, Pentax had something similar yeah. that the last super the camera. last of the super uh, film autofocus SLRs and if you notice anything familiar about this camera, it's because the Nikon D series was based on this yeah. camera. They used the frame of this as the base for the Nikon D12345. Yeah. So this camera, as a film camera, is a killer. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get a lot better than that. And then there is uh, the, the special type of person, or maybe we each have inside of us a special type of person yep. that want to, wants to control everything. Um, <laughs> and, and do serious maths while they take pictures. Yeah, yep. uh, t take a picture once a month or yep. something. <laughs> uh, then you should definitely go for a large format camera. Uh, the Cinar cameras are very, very, very cheap to what they used to co cost back in the day. Yeah. Um, they are not compact. Uh, the large format cameras that are selling at the moment are, you know, foldable things that you can take in your backpack. Uh, but the Cinar is, for that exact reason, it is very cheap. Yeah. And uh, you can do some awesome portraits. 
you awesome studio landscapes work. If, and you're, if you're brave enough. Yeah, if if you have a car. <laughs> if you have a car and maybe a mule. Yeah, yeah, yeah then a scenery is a very good <laughs> yeah. choice. And um, otherwise it's, you know, there is so much to choose from, thousands of cameras. Yes, the ones that are the most wanted by people tend to go price tends yeah. to rise obviously because there is yeah. demand uh, but if you have already established everything that you know your process you can put money into it yep. and you will probably not lose it as yeah prices are going up all yep. the time yeah okay that was so, our yeah setup uh, this is what we well these are some of the cameras we, yeah. we recommend but Make your own decisions. Do your research. Uh, there's plenty of resources online. You have got resources. I've got resources online. Yes. There's stuff that you can read and you can learn. Um, you can ask people s sensible questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I always welcome sensible questions. Yeah. Um, and and you can find your way. Yeah. And uh, each step obviously has hundreds to camera uh, of cameras you can choose from for mm -hmm. each step. So just uh, bear in mind that don't go into the deep end, just go shallow first yeah. and then learn bit by bit. Just and dip your toes in. Yes, yeah. it's the best advice we can give. Yeah. And goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.